Hello again, fellow citizens. I'm Orbital Jeffo, and I'm happy to once again be here with you in the Star Citizen universe. Before I begin, I'd like to thank you for visiting my channel today and for all your support. My tiny channel owes its growth only to you and your engagement, so if you have anything to add to today's content, please be sure to leave it in the comment section below, and also consider snoogling the like button along the way. Let's get into it. I arrived at this year's IAE Expo with no particular plan in mind. It was while they were playing an intriguing commercial for the 400i when it struck me. I should take this opportunity to feature the 890 jump in a new video, and so here we are. Despite all of its magnificent glory, the 890 jump is not a ship that I can really ever say that I plan on owning. That being said though, this is the second time that I've flown and played around on one, and the experience was lavishly excessive and decadent, <laughs> everything that the 890J was meant to be. After renting it on the showroom floor, I decided I'd take my smaller 315P up to Port Tressler, where I'd pick the 890J up from a docking port. Blasting through the new volumetric clouds over the planet was a new step towards realism. I took a few moments to appreciate them on my climb out. It's amazing how much they actually do add to the immersion. Walking down the docking bridge towards the massive ship really offers the perspective of just how large this ship really is. I spent most of my playthrough trying to imagine how a guest must feel aboard this ship for the very first time. And once you've made the walk down the docking corridor or ridden up in the boarding elevator, you'll find yourself in the center of the main foyer. This space serves as the main arrival area for most guests aboard the ship, and the layout reminds me of arriving at the front entrance of a five-star hotel. The main glass entrance door opens up to the center atrium. It's an open layout spanning three levels with plenty of lounge space, clear glass ceiling, and a grand staircase encircling it. This is truly the central hub of the ship. Natural plant life lines each side, reaching towards the high glass ceiling for natural light. Off to each side of the main atrium are four guest suites, two on the first and second level respectively. Each opens up to a generous sitting and desk area, perfect for having an end of day nightcap or privately entertaining a friend. Underfoot is a soft toned earthy hardwood, while overhead a curvy modern sculpture dances across the ceiling. Each guest room includes an ensuite with generously sized sink and vanity, ample storage for clothing, and prominently features the Origin Rainfall Shower with seating and a shallow tub with foot jets. The room's sizable bed is partially surrounded by a light wall and showcases minimalistic luxury decor. Perhaps the most prominent feature of each guest suite is the large aquarium wall shared by the bed and living areas. Just imagine what aquatic wonders these tanks will someday hold. Moving back into the atrium past the comfortable lounge seating, a small corridor provides engineering access for crew and also egress to the eight-seat escape rafts for jettisoning passengers away in emergencies. In addition to individual escape pods intended for crew, the 890 Jump is equipped with two of these escape rafts, one on either side. At the center of the rear of the atrium, we find the 890J's luxury pool and spa. Finely crafted in stained wood is the primary corridor, which connects the main entrance and elevators with the main pool, spa, sauna, and changing facilities. The combination of natural wood and stone gives one the feeling of relaxing in a natural cave grotto or hot spring. The facilities include spacious changing areas, clothes racks, and showers. Arrive fresh, leave refreshed could be the motto of any 890 spa. The spa room features a natural waterfall and ample seating surrounds the deck of the main lap pool area. The passenger and crew elevators both run for the 890J spa, providing timely service for the guests within. After a rejuvenating afternoon at the spa, change into your evening best and adjourn to the dining room and bar, located off the atrium's second level. This is also where the second two guest suites are located, identical to the ones we toured earlier. The round bar is the focal point of the lounge space and ample windows provide for orbital views and natural light, while guests enjoy their cocktails in good company. Once your reservation is called, proceed to the main dining room where luxury cuisine awaits while looking out at the stellar vistas surrounding you. Imagine a proper breakfast buffet adorning this counter space as you and other waking travelers begin the day. 
The ultimate dining experience is, of course, to be had at the main table at the very forward section of the ship, separated by a one-way privacy partition. Whether used for exquisite dinner parties with the captain or for business conferences on the go, this shared table is sure to overhear conversations of consequence in the galaxy. But what about after dinner, you ask? The night is young and perhaps the captain has invited you to tour the bridge or, even better, his or her private quarters. The top level of the atrium provides direct access to both, along with long viewing windows and ample seating on what I call the sun deck. Once through the main door to the captain's quarters, you'll find yourself in the captain's aft observatory, which features elevated seating and windows uniquely situated above the aft main thrusters. Turning left at the bottom of the marble staircase will deliver you directly to the captain's office, where many an important meeting has been held concerning ship's business. The captain's office offers a spacious layout and ample shelving for books on stellar cartography or orbital mechanics, and features a prominent minimalist desk front and center, ensuring the captain is the focal point of this room. Turning right instead from the marble staircase brings you into the captain's private mess, or you may find yourself sharing a cozy private breakfast with him or her if you play your cards right. Connecting the two rooms in the middle is the captain's quarters and bath, with amenities similar to those of the guest suites. But where does all of this luxury service originate from? As is so often the case among luxury vessels, the truly hard work is done out of view of the rich and famous. Allow us to rewind just a few minutes to our time spent in the main dining room and bar lounge, Neatly tucked away, partly behind a partition here, is one of the service doors leading to the world of the working crew aboard the A90 Jump. Just past a small order prep station is the service elevator, which offers access to the crew kitchen, where the finest meals are prepared by the ship's chef. To one side of the kitchen includes the walk-in cooler for keeping lobster tail and other fine fare fresh on a long deep space voyage. Outside the kitchen in one of several crew corridors, we find the crew's escape pods. In a critical emergency, while the passengers evacuate in groups, the crew will evacuate individually in their escape pods. Of course, serving guests isn't the only important responsibility the ship's crew has. Ship defenses and medical care are also key roles that must be filled on any ship of this size. One such space aboard the 890 Jump is the Battle Bridge, a hardened centralized command center intended to be used during the most extreme combat. Here, the crew is protected and can perform the same tasks as on the main bridge. Additionally, several fully manned retractable pressurized turrets, in addition to a remote controlled turret, allow the crew to protect the ship from pirates or ransomers while out in the black. No matter what direction they come from, the ship's defenses are easily deployed. Another important necessity is the med bay, located just down the hall from the shuttle lounge. The 890 Jump Med Bay is a Tier 2 medical facility ready to treat both guests and crew for illness or injury, and is also equipped to securely isolate foreign pathogens. Tier 3 injuries may be stabilized here for transport to the nearest fully equipped facility. You may be asking yourself, where does this heroic, hard-working crew go after a hard day of labor for the one percenters? The 890 Jump includes comfortable, albeit minimalistic, crew accommodations. Just off the crew kitchen is the crew mess, which leads us to the crew lounge, dining area, and seven individual crew cabins. Each cabin sleeps one and includes enough storage space for each crew member's uniform and personal belongings. The crew changing room includes seating and clothing hooks along with three fully functional bathroom suites. Each bath suite is spacious and is equipped with a sink, vanity, commode, and origin rainfall shower. An EVA storage room connects the crew facilities to the hangar bay airlock and also a recreation lounge with come standard equipped with a pool table and seating. It may be necessary at times to receive or say goodbye to guests while not docked in a station, so the 890 Jump is equipped with a generously sized hangar bay which can fit several different shuttlecraft, even the 300i. While waiting for their shuttle to arrive or after being dropped off, guests are funneled through a comfortable waiting lounge just off the hangar bay. In addition to the facilities and amenities we've seen and toured, the ship includes a triple layer graphene hull, stamina main engines and omni maneuvering thrusters, and a generously sized main and quantum fuel tank. I found the 890 Jump to be surprisingly responsive and agile while flying it, especially for its size, is particularly noticeable when lining up the ship for docking. 
Its engineering sections run along each side of the hangar and cargo bay and is easily accessed by the crew. This is truly a ship to be manned by a team. While it is possible to pilot this craft by a single person, it's obvious that it's designed to be occupied by many. I felt incredibly small and lonely during my time on board, and I even got spooked several times hearing strange noises. I thought for sure somebody had gotten on board even though nobody was ever there. Like I said earlier, this is a ship that I admire, but I plan to never own. I can't really see myself working towards buying it in-game, let alone spending almost a thousand real dollars on it. That isn't to say that there isn't incredible gameplay to be had on the 890 Jump. I can't wait to be able to be on board one of these, functioning as a team. But I don't really see it functional for myself. Hopefully I didn't leave anything out today. If you have anything to add about the 890 Jump or have any stories about your own 890, please leave it for us in the comment section below. Also consider booping the like button, which helps my fledgling channel out with the algorithm in that giant sea of YouTube. I also stream quite a few space games on Twitch several times a week, and we'll be adding Star Citizen in the coming months. Please come check me out, I'd love to see you there, links in the description. Until next time though, thank you so much for watching, I'm Orbital Jeffo, fly safe, and please be kind to one another out there. Bye.